Hello everybody from Yellowstone National Park. We've been waiting on this for a long time. We're glad we're here. There's going to be a lot in this video, so stay tuned. That is the Snake River down there. It's starting to rain here in Yellowstone. Yep, it's moving in. All right, so we just entered Yellowstone National Park. Now, we were going to do a video clip of the intro at the sign, and there's people waiting to take pictures. So, obviously, since we were going to be longer, we were letting the people who were just taking photos go ahead of us. So, we start talking to two different... They weren't all together, were they? they no. Were. So, out here in northwest Wyoming, we start talking to uh, two sets of people. Both are from Tennessee. And both of them just north of Knoxville. Now, how uh, odd is that? One guy was from Clinton, Tennessee. I can't remember where the other guy said, and his wife said they were from. So. Uh, Bristol. Yeah, Bristol, that's right. So we're letting them go ahead of us to take pictures. And they're like, well, why are you letting us go ahead? I said, well, because we're going to do a video clip. Oh, uh, what are y'all doing? Now, there's an older gentleman. He was kind of funny. He was hilarious, actually. He, he says, uh, what are y'all going to record that for? I said, well, we have, we have a YouTube. He says, you got a YTube channel like that. <laughs> I said, yeah, we do. <laughs> So then they all get curious. So after we let them take their pictures, we tell them we're going to record our intro. Well, they all want to stand there with them watching us. And like, <laughs> you know, they were like amazed. So I felt sort of silly. That's why it was so short because right behind the tripod where our camera's set up, we got about five or six people just staring at us. So a little and, bit of an audience. Yeah, a little bit of an audience. That's so okay. It was fun to talk to them. We enjoyed yes. it. So, um, yeah, but it was just interesting to be this far away. We're probably 1,800 miles or maybe 2,000 miles from home. And two different sets of people are from Tennessee. So we told them, we gave them a card, told them that we do a lot of stuff in and around the Smoky Mountains. So anyway. If you guys watch this video, let us know. Say hey in the comments. Yeah, absolutely. Good meeting y'all. Uh, thank y'all for watching. So. Uh, much more to come from Yellowstone Park. Hopefully this rain is just a passing show. Yeah, well it's gonna be, we're gonna see some stuff today and some stuff tomorrow. Yeah, so. we're breaking Yellowstone up into at least two days. Yes. You have to. Yeah, yeah. So waiting in line uh, to get into Yellowstone, the uh, showers have passed over. So I wanna give you the pricing information. And again, if you're gonna be visiting at least three national parks within a year's time, then you, it would be worth your while to get the National Parks Pass unless one of them's the Smokies, which doesn't charge a fee. Uh, so it's $35 private vehicles, $30 motorcycle. I think it's pretty much the same as it was at Teton, isn't it? I think it is. Okay, so there's that information. Okay, so starting to drive through Yellowstone now. Um, we're gonna break this up, like I said, in two days after that rain shower. It is 53 degrees outside. That's what the car display is showing the temperature to be. So I really like these um, trees right here, uh, these evergreens, it's really, really pretty through here. We haven't really seen any scenery yet, but uh, this is a nice little drive. Okay, so we are at West Thumb Geyser Basin. Um, we're actually showing that we're right here. So I was actually looking at this before we came. I want to do this outer loop here because there's going to be some pretty interesting things to see. I don't know what that red line means, um, oh, but that's... Yeah what I want to see. So it's right here on Yellowstone Lake, which sits at a surface elevation of 7,700 plus feet. And the maximum depth is, what'd you say, 455 feet? Yeah. Something of that effect. Yeah, so it's huge. This is our first stop in Yellowstone National Park. We're walking the boardwalk here. Here at West Thumb, they have several, we've seen smoke coming up from several locations. These little, I guess they're hot springs. They're not actually geysers, because I don't guess they shoot up. Look how pretty that blue water is inside of it. Yeah, let me try to zoom up on that. Huh? These are called the thumb paint pots. That's like a very light aqua color. <laughs> okay, so the next stop along the boardwalk is Bluebell Pool. Look how deep that, or I guess it goes deep underneath of it. And that is some hot water. That is pretty deep. I guarantee that's over your head, I guess. Look at 
looking out at West Yellowstone Lake, that thing is massive. That's actually what you're looking at there is just a little cove part of it. You can see where it opens up out there with the mountain backdrop. This is Lake Shore Geyser. I guess I'm assuming that would be, it probably shoots up right there. I don't know how often or if it still does. That's what it would be right there, wouldn't it? Yep. Fisherman's hoping. See it up ahead. Okay. This other little hot pool here. Fishing cone. Is that the one where the legend is that? I guess. Yes, I thought it was. It is. It is. <laughs> where they would catch their fish and cook them there. So it's underwater now. Yeah. I don't think it's active. So apparently that was at one time a hot spring or a geyser or what something. The legend is that you would catch your fish and cook them there. All right. As we go along the boardwalk, we come to Big Cone. Sorry, y'all. I'm not sure of the story behind any of these. Yeah, I'm not either. Um, but it looks like it's blowing water inside there. Yeah. One thing, it feels good right here. Temperature is 49 degrees outside. I'm in shorts. But that seems pretty warm. Yeah. This, way. this is called Black Pool. Honestly, it looks like the waters of the Caribbean. <laughs> it's blue color. Look how deep that is. That's how deep do you think that is? Look right there where it goes down. It's like a drop off right here. So pretty much goes back up in like a little underwater cave or something. That's fascinating. That's where we are now in Yellowstone Park. You want to tell them? You're at Old Faithful. Old Faithful. So estimated, give or take 10 minutes, is 4.31 p.m. And it's 3.36 right now. Yeah, so we've got, well, Around an hour. Hopefully, it'll be back this side of an hour. So down here to the left, we're looking at the famous Yellowstone Lodge. And I can imagine what it would cost to stay there a night. I would love to do it sometime. Some of these people have windows facing the geyser. They don't have to come out here. They can watch it from the room. Okay, it's starting to spew up a little water. <laughs> then it stops the minute we get the camera on. <laughs> well, maybe it's building up some pressure. <laughs> I'll be excited when I see it too. Okay, now. Well, oh, I just got that. It's no longer a question of when, it's if. Oh, the bird! That would show the most promise, but still, still not a full eruption. Well, I thought it just erupted in the quill. I didn't know it teased you. That's the fourth time it's shot a little water up and stopped. Okay. Here are all the people. 
Wait to see. A couple thousand people out here, what you say? Oh, yeah. We're in the middle of them. Yeah. It goes down that way as well. We have now officially been to Yellowstone National Park. You cannot say you've been to Yellowstone unless you watched Old Faithful. Which we did. So, it was about 10 minutes late. Is that about right? About 10 uh, minutes late. Yeah. Um, it likes to tease you. It teases for probably 10 or 15 minutes. With It would start to shoot water up. You'd get your camera on. Then it would stop. Then it would do it again. But finally it did. So, we got to see Old Faithful. So you like it? Yeah, I'm glad I can say I did it. All right. There is a quick view of the Yellowstone Lodge. I wanted to tour it. We've lost a lot of time today, so we're going to head on over to our motel for the night. Staying at the Stagecoach Inn. Here in West Yellowstone, Montana. Getting into town finally. This just looks like a neat little town. Yeah. 
Okay, so you're right. I thought two of them were, but this is where we anticipate eating supper, but we're not sure. Stagecoach is literally a block. We could walk through it. But we, since we are only about nine miles away in another state that we're close to, we've never been to, we're going to ride out to the Idaho state line and cross it so we can say we've been to Idaho. So then we're going to come right back and check in. Folks, we were going to get our picture by the Idaho sign, but it is completely covered with stickers. It's the line going back into Yellowstone National Park. It is 7.09 on Tuesday morning. And we just got to see a little bit of the park last night, and we're heading back in today. All right, so the goal today is to do the upper part of the loop of Yellowstone. Now, if you look at Yellowstone on a map, it's like a figure eight almost. So we did the southwest part yesterday, Old Faithful, and uh, west thumb, west southeast thumb. part. So today we're going to go north, and we're going to hit some sites along the way there. And the upper loop in its entirety is 70 miles long. Yeah, so we've got about 70 miles worth of driving to do and some sites to see along the way. We're going to try to go to Artist Point. There's some uh, waterfall views there. And then there's up, Upper Falls. Lower Falls, yeah. And then... Possibly Lower Falls and then Grand Prismatic, which is a hot spring. Yeah. A, a multicolored hot spring, I guess. That one's... A, yeah, that you need to kind of hike up a hill to look down. Yeah. On. You can walk beside it, but I want to be above it, I think. Yeah, I yes, agree. Please. I think the view there was better. So we're going to do that today, Lord willing. And weather's supposed to be good. There's still some low-lying clouds and some fog, but... Still early. Still early. And it's only 45 degrees, so... Yes, it's warmed up to 45 degrees from 37. So riding along the river here, very pretty. This is still uh, on the entrance from West Yellowstone. We haven't even gotten to the loop yet. It's a pretty good little drive just from West Yellowstone to the loop. Let's see if I can see. But once we get to the loop, we're going to uh, go north. I think it's 14 miles. From from here or from West Yellowstone? From West Yellowstone. From the okay. state line, it's showing 14 miles. Finally reached the junction here. This is called Madison Junction. So we are going to take a left and we are going to head up towards Mammoth Hot Springs. backing up. I don't know if they see an animal or if they know what they were doing, but looks like we have another hot spring. Looks like they're everywhere. Yeah, they're all over the park. Our first stop of the day. Gibbons Falls. Gibbons Falls.
all these rocks on the road right here. It's a really very varied scenery. Yes. <laughs> Probably the best scenery we have seen in the park so far. I'm sorry to be getting the rear view mirror, but there's not a pull off here. Next stop along the road is Mammoth Hot Springs. Mammoth Hot Springs. So we're gonna go up and check that out. Shaughnessy printed out the highlights that she wanted to stop and see, and this is one of them. So Mammoth Hot Springs, you gotta walk up this little path and up that little wooden deck there. Might as well show you a little bit of the view from up here. We're here at Mammoth Hot Springs and the boardwalks are going every which direction. And then dead end. I'm not sure if Mammoth Hot Springs is one of these springs or if it's... And it may be up there because I remember you or if it's a series the side of it. Well, somebody's okay. parked way up there at the top. See those trucks? Yeah, I wonder how they got up there. I don't know. Alright, so it doesn't look like there's anything to see on this little boardwalk, so we're going to go back and climb that one. And here in Mammoth Springs, the little town area, they have a post office. This is so different than the Smokies, the National Park we're used to. They just have little towns and villages inside of it. Yeah, they do. Where they have gasoline. There's a clinic, said. Yeah. yeah. They have an auto repair. Back in Old Faith, they have an auto repair shop. I hate to have to use that. I would hate to have to use it, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, So we're going to detour into Gardner, Montana, just so we can say we did. And um, we're going to exit the park briefly, then come back in. But this is a little windy road here. This is very scenic. And we just wanted to see it because we're making pretty good time today. So Very curvy, but yes, very scenic. And we got a 10% grade. <laughs> look at that. No, we were doing 6%, so now yeah. 10%. Wow. Look at, the, look at the valley. Get, get that if you can. Look at the greenery there. How green that is.
just amazing to look at. So pretty. All right, getting ready to go into Gardner, Montana. There's the town. And this is the historic arch straight ahead, which is the entrance to Yellowstone, which we're leaving Yellowstone, but we're going to come right back through it. Just really wanted to say that we had been here. And with it being historic, you know, we just have to have to do that. And as far as history goes, 1872 was when Yellowstone National Park was founded as a national park. This is the Roosevelt Arch, and Yellowstone was actually the first national park. So let's just see what Gardner looks like for a brief minute. So it looks like a little town similar to West Yellowstone where we stayed last night. It's a lot of yeah. little stop shops and little eateries. So we are basically, we can now say we have been to Gardner, Montana. We're now gonna go back into Yellowstone and get back on our journey. Let me zoom up a little bit on that. It's gonna be a little dark because the sun's like right behind that. I have to go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Right, that's the Roosevelt Arch, and here's the entry sign getting back into the National Park. So one of the things Yellowstone is known for is its fabulous waterfalls. We are at another one. This is U-N-D-I-N-E, Undine or Undine. So that's a pretty impressive waterfall right there. And this is a very easy walk from the parking lot, what, 30 feet? <laughs> so this is one you definitely want to see because it's very easy. Absolutely beautiful. driving along and a lot of people are stopped and pulled off so we pulled off as well and we spotted a bear. Fast. Trust what? if he's got the shoulder I don't know if that's a black bear. Can you tell what color he is? No, see if you can look over my shoulder into here. It's jumpy. I'm just zoomed up so much. He's got the shoulder hump, but he's very dark. I honestly, I don't know. I'll have to look at the video to see if it's a grizzly or a black bear. Okay, this one for sure is a grizzly bear. Look at he's that. Got like, I've never seen one color like that. He's got like a brown, dark brown face. And, oh wow. And the rest of the body's brown. looking at some of the vast scenery here on the upper loop. So we've just seen two bears within what, a couple of miles of each other. The first one, we don't know if it was a dark colored grizzly or a black bear, but the second one there was no doubt about. the Yellowstone Tower General Store and this is a little place you can go in look for a souvenir and you can also get you a snack they got hot dogs bison brats and ice cream and here's also where you walk to see Tower Falls 
which is 500 feet from this side, so I'm gonna walk out there. Getting ready to cross Dunraven Pass. I wanted to show you the expanse here of the valley. And then over here, we're looking up at Mount Washburn, which I'm gonna have to check myself on this. I think might be the highest point in Yellowstone National Park. I know it's a popular, popular hike to the summit. We're not gonna take time to do it today. But that's Mount Washburn we're looking at. So just under 8,500 feet, we're actually almost getting into it on a few patches of snow right here. We've been seeing it on tops of the mountains, but we weren't expecting to be driving by any of it. So we're headed up, what'd you say, Dunraven Pass? Dunraven Pass is supposed to be the highest road point in yeah. Yellowstone. Yeah, on the loop road, not the highest mountain, but the highest yeah, point road. road. And it was 8,859, I believe. Okay, so we're going to be crossing that here momentarily. A little parking lot pull off area here, looking up again at Mount Washburn. There's some sort of structure or tower on the summit. Looks like there's a road going up to it. I wish I'd known that. We'd have gone. I thought it was a hike. It may be from the parking lot up there. It's much windy and colder up here. This is the sign for Dunraven Pass, the highest point on the road here in Yellowstone, 8,859. And over to the left is a parking area for Mount Washburn Hike. So apparently you can hike it. I don't know if you can drive to the top or what that road was. Um, yeah, we did. I don't know. Maybe it was, we didn't say surface road. No, no. It, it, it had the sign for the road. Look at it out there in the I distance. Oh, Zoom on that if you can. It. Don't know really what we're looking at. Sorry, it's a little jumpy. Just some snow-capped peaks of the Rocky Mountains. So riding along, we saw this bison laying up here in the grass. You don't see one with a bird on the back. And he's got a little friend up there. So now we're going to do upper, middle, and lower overlook of Upper Falls. And We've seen videos on this from Through My Lens and it looks really pretty, so we're excited. Okay, you can't really see much right here, but you can hear them.
the upper brink of Upper Falls. We are now headed out on the south rim drive of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone towards Artist Point. We saw that in a video. If you want to see an excellent video on Yellowstone National Park, look up through my lens. Uh, man travels with his dad, sometimes his wife, but he and his dad do a lot of road trips. And a lot of the ideas of things we're seeing today we got from that video. So um, we're going to drive out here now to Artist Point. That looked like a really nice place, so hopefully it is. Approaching Artist Point, it looks like a lot of other people are as well. So we may have to just want to stay with a vehicle and alternate if we can't find parking. So apparently this is a very popular destination. Okay, we found some parking at Artist Point. So from the parking lot, which is actually a lot larger than it looked from when I was recording, you walk down this little short. So what is that? The canyon. Oh yeah, this is the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. That's right. And I can sort of see why it's called that. Although it's not nearly as expansive as the Grand Canyon in Arizona. All right, so we're going to walk on down to Artist Point. Folks, this is Artist Point looking back at Lower Falls. And you are now seeing why I love the zoom feature of this camcorder as opposed to our old camera. Look at that. There's a story behind how it got its name. This is the other. Walk on down a little further, folks. There's people climbing up that ledge. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to do that. Yeah, don't, don't be those people. I'm sure, the view's pretty, but this is the straight-on view right here. Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. vantage point up these stairs which we're going to go take a peek and see what those are what this last vantage point offers is a view of the canyon going both ways this is going away from artist point you don't get that from the other two uh, overlooks and then over behind us is once again artist point. Next and final on our list of Yellowstone National Park is Grand Prismatic. It is a thermal hot spring, probably the premier one in the park. I'll show you why when I come down. The parking situation here is a nightmare. In fact, we had to get inventive because 
it's probably gonna be 45 minutes or an hour just to get a parking space so while she's back there in the line in the vehicle I'm gonna walk up here and see it record it then I'm gonna walk back and get in the driver's seat and she's gonna walk over here and see it so rather than try to wait for parking that's the way we got to do it <laughs> The walkway up to Grand Prismatic, and as you can see, this is one of the main features of the 13? Yellowstone National Park right here. This is one of the most popular hot springs. But apparently there are several of the little pools here, yeah. with Grand Prismatic being the main one. Make out a little bit of the aqua blue color of the water. Kind of hard to see underneath all the steam. So as far as Grand Prismatic, we made a mistake uh, earlier. There's two ways to see it. You can either walk the boardwalk right around it, which is what we did. That's not what we were wanting to do. No, I was wanting to hack up over and I thought- Yeah, the there's an overlook that's above it. And we thought that was it, it was not. So we're gonna do that now. You actually have to drive down to the- Ferry Falls. Yeah, Ferry Falls trailhead and finding parking there is a challenge as well. But I actually did so um, we're gonna try to see Grand Prismatic from above because that's by far the best way to see it we're now looking down on Grand Prismatic from the high up vantage point which was a pretty steep walk how long would you say we walked I'm gonna say three quarters of a mile to a mile yeah yeah along the gravel road and it was level for the first part but then got pretty steep Look at the beautiful blue water of that. Here is the open view of it. So. That is pretty impressive. Excuse me, sir. A little bit. Thank you. Hey. Okay, folks, we want to give you our closeout and our thoughts about Yellowstone National Park. Now, Yellowstone was the first national park uh, established in 1872. It was the very first national park in the country. Actually, I think it's in the world. In the world, okay. 
well, national meaning this nation. Well, yeah, so, but it's a yeah. So we visited this week the fourth, fifth, and eighth most popular national parks or most visited. Now we live near the most visited, which is the Great Smoky Mountains, and it's like 13 million visitors a year, and it's like three times second place, which is Grand Canyon. So Yellowstone comes in at number four as far as most visited. Rocky Mountain National Park comes in at number five, and Grand Teton comes in at number eight. So this was our first trip to Yellowstone and Teton, but not to Rocky Mountain. It was our second trip to that one. But we're going to talk about Yellowstone. So uh, why don't you start off, start with what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, Tell your thoughts. Okay. This is going to be a while, so, so Yellowst I want to turn the camera back a little more towards you. So Yellowstone is a big park. It's got a lower loop and an upper loop. It's kind of like a figure eight, which it is kind of helpful though, so you can kind of break it up. Um, we basically, when we came from Grand Tetons into Yellowstone, we just did just the bottom kind of corner of the lower loop. So West that Thumb. First that first That first evening. So I saw West Thumb. Um, there's some hot springs there beside of um, Yellowstone Lake, which I loved seeing the colors of those. And look at those, those were nice. Um, drove up to see Old Faithful. Honestly, by the time we got there, I was so tired and so hungry. I'm like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> we had to wait almost and an hour. And it was hour. like 15 minutes late. <laughs> yeah, it was almost an hour. But you can't go to Yellowstone and not see Old Faithful. So right. I'm glad I can say yeah. I, I saw it. Um, and then we drove on to where we were staying in West Yellowstone, Montana. Next morning, got up and we did the upper loop going up, over, around, and then cut through the middle. And honestly, I had a list that I had printed out from Google Maps of all the hot spots I wanted to see. So basically, I had them in order. I'm like, okay, so when we come up on Gibbons Falls, let's stop. When we come up on this, and we did that. So you have no signal, GPS, no, no internet, nothing. So it's a good idea to kind of do your homework to make sure you see what you want to see. Um, saw Mammoth Springs, thought that was pretty neat. The scenery throughout Yellowstone changes with almost every curve. I mean, you go through rocky, um, not really deserty, but just kind of barren, and then you go through very fertile, green, you know, beautiful places. So, um, Grand Prismatic was below Yellowstone. We didn't do it the first night, just to time's sake. No, it's in Yellowstone. No, for, I know. I said the first night we didn't see it. Okay. It's below Old Faithful, going on the lower loop. Um, first, we hiked around it. Which it's, it's above Old Faithful. Above it, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Um, you we're tired, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, just walking around, you, you don't get the full effect of it. When you take the, the trail to see the overview, that's, that's the thing to do if you want to see Grand Prismatic. That was beautiful. Um, Overall, Yellowstone's a very big park, very pretty park. We didn't really have a lot of time to stop and explore like the souvenir shops or restaurants or anything like that. We were kind of on a time crunch, but to say we've been there and seen the beautiful parts of it, I'm thankful for that. So you do want to allow yourself, what would you say, at least three days to, to I would really, say really a minimum see. of two days and preferably three yeah. if you can. Yeah. We did it in a day and a quarter. We did hit the hot spots. But yeah, don't do what we did. Uh, you, you, we did feel very rushed and uh, just like we're gonna miss something if we didn't do it. Yeah, so. and like I said, it's always a good thing to kind of do a little bit of homework before you go to see what you know you want to see. If there's waterfalls or hot springs or something like that, yeah. you want to kind of know what you're going to see. Yeah. And Artist Point, I didn't mention that, the huge waterfall there in the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. Beautiful, beautiful, love that. All right, so, I don't want to make it too long. I could ramble on. <laughs> right. Well, I'm going to ask you a couple questions at the end, so okay. or at least one. Okay. So yeah, like she said, if you look at Yellowstone on a map, it's good to think of it as a figure eight, roughly. You'll have to use your imagination a little bit, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Now there are some side roads that go off of that, like the uh, what's that Lamar Ridge Trail? Lamar Valley. Yeah, Lamar Road. Valley. Which is actually going to the northeast entrance. Yeah, it's coming going to the northeast entrance. There's a north entrance, a northeast entrance. A west. A, a west, which is where, what we did, where we stayed, and then a south, and I want to think there's one more. I want to think I counted five on the map. That but, would be five. Okay. Did north, I south, five? east, west, and then the north. Northeast. Okay, yeah. So, but if you just look at the figure eight 
most of the things that you will want to see are on what we call the figure eight. And again, use your imagination. It's not a perfect eight, but it has an upper loop and a road that cuts across the middle mm -hmm. and a lower loop. So uh, we hope from our video you get some good ideas. I do want to mention two other good channels where we got most of our ideas, just to be honest with you. Uh, through my lens, uh, he and his dad went to Yellowstone. Uh, they showed us some of the sites that we decided we wanted to see as well and also what's that other channel we're in the Rockies we're in the Rockies uh, they do a lot of sit down stuff and talk to you but they also show you things so they've got a, they, they know Yellowstone inside and out front so, and back she grew yeah. up going there and yeah. they take their families so yeah they're very so they got some excellent tips as well and of course watch us so um, we do our best too yeah we try to bring you good video footage, but we're not as knowledgeable on the park as they are. So just just to put that out there. So yeah, um, you didn't really list any negatives. I know we had some that we talked about. The negatives oh, yeah. I would say about Yellowstone are two. Uh, aside from it being so big, don't underestimate how big this park is. We're used to driving through the Smokies across from Cherokee to Gatlinburg. Uh, it's over 140 miles around the entire loop of Yellowstone. We cut out the southeast part along Yellowstone Lake. We decided that was not of really interest to us. It may there be to you. Yeah, there wasn't a long, a lot along that way. We did see yeah. it from West Thumb. From so West Thumb, that was that it. That was but it. Yeah. We did cut that part out. That will not be in our in this video. So, oh, uh, but we did pretty much everything else as far as the scenic loop, but it's, it's a long, the, just the upper loop itself is 70 miles, and I think the lower loop is even a little bit bigger than that. So, well, it may be about the same. But um, the two things that I would say is the lack of signage and the lack of ranger presence is, I wish, is something that they would work on. We missed the road to West Thumb just because we saw the sign on the left that said two miles, and then there was no sign for the turnoff coming up from the south. But if you're coming back from the north, there is one. And we saw that two or three times where there's no sign for what you're wanting to see and we would miss our turn because it's not there. And then when we're coming back, they have one. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand why you wouldn't put a sign on both sides. We didn't see but maybe three rangers the entire time. There are times where we, we did not know where to go or what to do. You would love to see a ranger, especially some of the busier areas, um, to assist people and they were almost non-existent. So other than that, um, it's a pretty park. There's things that I would recommend if you're on a time crunch. Again, give yourself at least, bare minimum, two full days. Preferably three if you can. Um, the rooms in the towns outside of, Yellow, West, uh, outside of Yellowstone, in Gardner, Montana, West Yellowstone, Montana, are not cheap. You, now, we went 4th of July week, so I'm sure that didn't help. But I turn it maybe a little bit more. Some very pretty things in Yellowstone, some of the scenery, just wasn't I mean back the other way oh, I'm sorry. some of the scenery was uh, really nice some of it was like when's this ever gonna end from the south entrance entrance up to where you actually hit the bottom of the figure eight it seemed like forever to be honest with it's you it's just a lot going through the trees yeah it is so um, at this time I'm gonna ask you what your favorite site in Yellowstone was. If you could only do one thing in Yellowstone again, before you, had, I'll let you be thinking about that. We did see Old Faithful our first night. That wasn't even honestly something I was that looking forward to. But how do you go to Yellowstone and then go home and tell people you didn't go to Old Faithful? Yeah. How do you, you can't do that. You, that that'd be we had a, to see it a hall of shame reason. there, yeah. you know. <laughs> so we did that the first evening and it was, it was interesting to see. We waited probably about an hour for it to go off. Well, let me dispel a myth about Yellowstone. It does not go off every 90 minutes. They make predictions based on history, and it does vary, and they tell you to give uh, plus or minus 10 minutes, and it's only a guess. But people think it goes off every 90 minutes on, like clockwork. That is not the case. Uh, in fact, it was, I think, 15 minutes late from the projected time when it we was, met. It was, yeah, it was, which seemed like forever because, like yes. I said, we were both very tired. And very hungry. <laughs> and it, likes, it likes to mess with you too. It'll shoot up some water, then stop, then a few minutes later do it again, and everybody gets their cameras ready, and then that's not it. Yeah, and then you gotta wait another five, yeah. ten minutes. And I bet it did that eight or ten times. Yes. So, um, but anyway, all right, have you thought what is your favorite if you could only go back to one place? I know you were looking forward to Grand Prismatic. I think we each had our things we were looking forward to. Yeah, um, 
I don't know, because see, that, that, that is going to be such a toss-up for me, because Grand Prismatic taking the, the trail, the Fairy Falls trail above it. That would be a toss-up between that and Artist Point. That would be the two um, places. Hold on. So yeah, I would say between Artist Point and Grand, Grand Prismatic, the overview would be a toss-up for me, but if I had to pick I sort of say, the question was, you can only do one. <laughs> I would probably say Artist Point because it's just majestic in that canyon and that beautiful waterfall. Yeah, I guess it would probably be that Artist Point. Okay. All right. So, that was going to be my pick, Artist Point, the massive waterfall there in the Grand Canyon of the you know, Yellowstone area was awe-inspiring. Mm -hmm. And also, I liked the drive and the very extreme northern part of the loop um, you get some open expansive looks of, of some mountains and, and some green fertile yeah. valleys and I love seeing the grizzly bear that would be my highlight from Yellowstone mm -hmm. that was pretty exciting yeah so I'm gonna be honest with you though uh, let me ask you here's one more we visited three national parks this week put them in order <laughs> of what you preferred and now let me say this before we preface this. Just because one comes in number one, one comes in number three, don't mean you shouldn't see Yeah, this all is of just them. our opinion. They're, They're all nice. All beautiful. I'm going to say number one for me would be the Grand Tetons. Okay. Um, reason being, they were just majestic. I had always heard my mom talk about the mighty Tetons. Um, she painted them. She and we're going to review them, too. Them. I know, but I'm just saying as far as the three that Those were like... Super excited for me. Yellowstone would be next, um, just because of the variance of um, scenery, landscape, and so forth. And then third would be the Rocky Mountain National Park, which is beautiful. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you know, I just that that would be my point, my my, my opinion of the top three or putting them. Yeah, whatever. Your turn. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, it's not safe. We're going to differ on this one. <laughs> all right. I'm going to put. Um, Yellowstone at number three, simply because it's humongous and I felt worn out at the end of each day after doing it. Uh, there is a lot of, there's more, much more variation in Yellowstone than the others. Yeah. Uh, as far as you can, you can, right, she said, around a curve and see something different. Um, it does offer the most variety, but to me, just the scenic beauty of it, it's nice, but it did not rank with the other two to me. As far as one and two, that's hard for me because I was just awed by the Rocky Mountain National Park yesterday. Uh, when we visited in 2006, it was not as, um, it was cloudy. It wasn't cloudy yesterday. I got to see a lot more. I was honestly just in amazement at the beauty of it. And I also was at the Tetons. To me, that's a coin flip. But uh, you have to pick one. No, we didn't say that. Well, no, you made okay. me with my favorite. Right, that's fine. <laughs> if I had to pick one, huh, I'm going to go with Rocky Mountain, and I'm going to tell you why. Grand Tetons are beautiful, they're majestic, but you don't really climb an elevation. You're not, you don't get up high up. So, on the Trail Ridge Road in Rocky Mountain, you do. And you get to look at the whole expanse of the mountains and down in the valley. Yeah, and for the right. Tetons, you are in the valley. The Tetons are absolutely amazing. I, when I first saw them, I had been waiting so long to see them, it was something. But I think for that reason alone, if, you, if you're somebody who likes expansive mountain views, it's Rocky Mountain National Park. The Tetons, if you just like enjoy riding by and looking up at them, then that would be your pick there. As far as the beauty, it's a toss up. So, anyway, that's our review of Yellowstone. See it if you get the chance, but plan accordingly and give yourself plenty of time. Absolutely. So, thank you for watching. If you like this video, like and subscribe. And find and follow us on Facebook. And have a blessed day.